So, welcome to the 23rd lecture of surface engineering. Uh, in the previous lecture, we covered uh, short pinning, uh, where we used uh, spherical objects to hit the surface and create limited deformation zone below the surface and in the process uh, created uh, residual compressive stress, which enhanced the fatigue life. Um, in this particular uh, lecture, we are going to cover a very similar approach of uh, conventional uh, processing, but using not uh, projectiles, uh, but uh, very uh, similar type of objects, solid objects, but the uh, the energy of or the velocity is not coming from the gas propelled uh, or air propelled uh, shots, but uh, these energies kinetic energies are created by ultrasonic wave. So, that is why this kind of a process is called ultrasonic pinning. So, ultrasonic pinning or in brief the UP is uh, a process where we actually uh, again have the same intention of improving the fatigue life. Uh, particularly for welded elements or structures in narrow zone, not necessarily for very large surface areas, uh, by using ultrasonic wave as the uh, means of throwing or uh, uh, directing uh, certain objects, solid objects like this onto the surface of the uh, particular region that we want to develop such compressive stress. So, uh, these are essentially very high frequency pulses, which uh, obviously the very name ultrasound gives you the impression that we are talking about very high frequency waves. So, these waves uh, basically creates a certain mechanical um, motion kinetic energy and uh, so we target highly stressed locations in the weld and we want to modify the metal uh, at the weld junctions at the weldments at very shallow depth in typically atomic scales. This uh, actually relieves the stress concentration and the so called residual stress and increases the integrity and strength of the structure. Now, whenever we actually uh, experience a solidification process, we all know that uh, any liquid when it solidifies it tends to contract depending upon the coefficient of uh, thermal expansion and when it contracts, the state of stress onto the surface is tensile in nature. And uh, so, any welded joint essentially is prone to cracking or failure, uh, because the state of stress on the surface is uh, tensile in nature. So, we would like to reverse that. We, inst so, instead of if this is the welded joint, so if this is the weldment, we would like to create a state, normally after solidification, this is the state of stress but we would like to reverse that and create a state of stress which is opposite in nature. So, instead of positive, we would like to make the state of stre stress negative or compressive in nature. So, uh, this is quite possible in localized region using such ultrasonic pinning. So, um, how the way we adjust or optimize the parameters, we actually can produce uh, necessary changes uh, in terms of the residual stress, stress concentration and other mechanical properties and in the process improve the fatigue life. So, the implements instead of spherical shots what we use here, they are called strikers and typically the uh, strikers uh, actually uh, uh, they are propelled by this ultrasonic wave at very high frequency and they are responsible for creation of this plastic deformation. So, we actually are combining the effects of very high frequency impacts, which are coming from the strikers and the ultrasonic uh, oscillation that is happening at the background. So, because of this ultrasonic oscillation, uh, which actually is created and uh, transferred by the uh, transducer that we have and at the head of the trans. So, there is a gap between the transducer and the surface on which we want to treat. So, this gap is partially filled by these uh, strikers and because of the ultrasonic uh, very high frequency wave created, the strikers have no other uh, option than to go and hit the surface at uh, a certain level of and create a certain level of uh, impact energy onto the surface. 
And because of this, in, these impacts, uh, successive impacts, we treat the surface and create a, a state of stress. The typical frequency at which uh, this kind of uh, ultrasonic uh, uh, transducers or generators operate is a few tens of kilohertz. And uh, these at this very high frequency, uh, they, when they impact, they obviously create a deformation zone, which may be confined to limited area and limited uh, depth, but is very effective to create uh, a reasonable amount of deformation and uh, plastic strain below the surface. So, these are the, uh, the various types of heads which are used uh, and these are replaceable. So, uh, whenever there is certain uh, deformation of these heads, we can change them and just from the bottom uh, we actually allow the ultrasonic waves to uh, actually propel these uh, strikers or striker heads to go and hit uh, these kind of uh, welded joints. So, a welded joint in as welded condition if it appears like this after such uh, shock pinning uh, they will actually appear very uniform and if you actually uh, measure the residual stress by let us say uh, extra diffraction then you will find that the state of stress is negative or compressive in nature. So, the advantage is that in cases where for example, in a construction activity where you actually had to weld this corner or treat certain portions here or right on the rooftop. So, in such cases you cannot dismantle the whole roof here or you cannot dismantle the joint at the corner and then take it to a machine and do a, a, a ultrasonic pinning or for that matter any other kind of pinning. So, in order to uh, actually extend the life of such welded joints at this uh, difficult to access corners or large surface areas and so on, you actually all you need to do is to take the gun, the ultrasonic pinning gun and uh, uh, then uh, create this, treat the surface and create this state of stre stress. So, if this is the total thickness that we are talking about of a particular sheet, then this region and this region actually uh, uh, may actually develop a state. Of, if this is the depth direction, then this is the, and this is the surface. So, we actually would like to create a state of stress which is negative or compressive in nature up to a certain depth from the surface. And even if the bulk inside or the interior is, uh, is actually at a tensile mode of residual stress, it does not matter because crack opening if at all happens should reach the surface or uh, propagate through the surface, then only the failure can happen. Now, uh, while talking about difficult to access regions, for example, this corner, the root of the weldment is also very important. In fact, is more important than the rest of the weldment. So, uh, using this ultrasonic pinning, you actually can access it better than short pinning. Uh, depending on the striker size and so on, uh, you actually can uh, uh, treat these regions very well and create uh, a, a state of uh, re, uh, compressive stress at this toe or the root of the uh, weldment. So, this is the typical machine and uh, so this is uh, where you generate, this is the generator and uh, so this is how you feed the frequency, you create the um, ultrasonic waves here, you uh, connected to this uh, generator uh, portion, the basic head of the uh, transducer and the transducer uh, transfers the uh, frequency at very uh, exactly the same frequency is uh, transferred through the booster or actually is made even higher through the booster. And eventually this is where you create this uh, 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 kinetic energy and motion and you can use either the shots or the uh, or the strikers which could be needles or pins and so on and which. So, there is a very little gap between these two and this is the gap which actually is very crucial because this is what will determine the intensity with which the shots or the pins or the needles will hit the surface and then this is where you treat the surface. This is where you create the certain. Um, so, the shots come out and this is where the object is and this is where you actually uh, create this uh, mechanical deformation. So, the surface after deformation may look somewhat like this. So, you can easily make out that there are certain uh, regions, certain undulations created onto the surface 
and these uh, waviness is because of the uh, impact of those shots. So actually, um, you uh, can create, uh, 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 for example, this large gear piece can be actually treated by ultrasonic pinning uh, when you expose it just to this opening. So this is the opening through which the ultrasonic wave can actually uh, hit this uh, gear tit and then create the required state of stress. So in either shot pinning or ultrasonic shock pinning where the propulsion is purely coming from the ultrasonic waves, in both the cases there is a physical contact of the shots or the needles or the pins or wires or whatever we are using. Uh, in certain cases where we do not want to see such localized deformation or indentations or ripples created, we want uh, the, the deformation zone to be wider and not develop such typical uh, indentations. We actually can go for a more sophisticated technique where we use a, a targeted laser beam of very high uh, power density typically gigawatt per centimeter square, uh, which actually, uh, so first of all, if this is the work piece, so this is the work piece that we have and uh, we actually cover it up with a particular tape or uh, some other coating and then we use a laser pulse to heat the surface. So actually the size of this laser spot is very, very small, uh, maybe at the most a few millimeters. Uh, but when it hits the surface and actually you expose or irradiate this region at one instant of time and then you move either up or down and uh, then uh, the next region is uh, irradiated and there could be always some amount of overlap of regions that are irradiated. So even if the laser beam is small but you actually can cover a much wider or longer surface area. So when you expose and when you irradiate such very high power density onto the surface, so instantly a coating that you have below the tape or the cover gets vaporized. And when it gets vaporized, it would obviously try to expand. Because of the prevention or because of the cover that you have applied on the other side, so the wave that is created between the tape and the workpiece now experiences an extremely high level of shock wave. And this shock wave is able to deform very little depth from the surface. So the amount of deformation that propagates is smaller. And when you actually irradiate this smaller zone with very high load, so the effective stress that actually works on this is much higher than what you can experience in case of um, ultrasonic pinning or short pinning and as a result you actually can create a shock pressure which is uh, much higher uh, by a factor of 5 or uh, and also can last 2 to 3 times longer uh, than the laser uh, uh, pulse duration. So in other words if the pulse duration is uh, for a millisecond or microsecond the effect lasts for longer period of time. And if the beam diameter is let us say 1 or 2 millimeter, the area that is affected is wider than 1 or 2 millimeters. So actually that is how you can move over the surface and integrate over the entire surface area. Now, uh, so it is not the thermal effect of the laser that is important or that is what is going to make the changes onto the surface of the workpiece, but the shock wave that you generate because of rapid vaporization of the coating or thin film that you actually have applied and then covered it up with a with a certain tape or some other uh, confinement mechanism. And uh, usually to make this confinement even more uh, effective um, so that the shock wave created by that uh, so called plasma or simply the gaseous state of that uh, substance, you actually can have it in an immersed condition. So immersed in water or some other medium. So confinement of the plasma gives more uh, uh, effect or increases the effect of such shock waves and creates 
uh, uh, the residual uh, stress or initially the deformation part which is responsible for creation of residual stress. That, so, that is higher because of the confinement of the plasma. So, this is what I was talking about that this is uh, the sample and this is the uh, uh, film that you have which is going to vaporize because of the irradiation of the laser coming from the top and the immediate vaporization actually can create a very transient plasma, very short living plasma. But this plasma immediately after it is generated would definitely like to expand. So, it would like to expand in both the directions. Okay. But since this region is confined and this is a rigid body, so the plasma is going to transfer its energy by way of creating deformation of very shallow depth onto this work piece. So, this region, this is typically the process we follow for all other pinning processes, right? be it shot or, or shock pinning or whatever. The difference here is that there is no individual object which is hitting the surface. This is not the case here. Here we have a plasma which is much wider than the simple laser beam. So, if the beam is only of this diameter, we actually are covering a much wider surface region and this region is going to create uh, a shock wave which is uh, uh, going to cover a much wider area. So, the effect is felt uh, over a wider surface area and uh, the amplitude of the shock wave that we generate is uh, much more intense because of the high energy pulsed laser. So, typical advantage of laser shock pinning will be the depth of the cold work that we generate is less, but because the intensity of the plasma is higher, we actually produce a deeper residual stress which could be four times the depth of residual stress that we can create uh, uh, through shock pinning. So, it is in a way more effective than shock pinning and certainly uh, more effective than shot pinning. The disadvantage is that it is a fairly expensive equipment because laser is an expensive, so the capital cost is very high. Operating cost may not be very high, but you require a fairly high skill set to be able to manipulate well and cover or integrate the entire surface area. You require a protected environment because uh, you know very well that laser can penetrate almost any solid, certainly human eye. So, one has to take enough precaution in terms of chamber and goggles and so on. Uh, we also require uh, uh, operators who are trained, who are skilled enough to uh, use this kind of a, uh, uh, sophisticated technique. So, uh, depending on the, uh, the fluence, laser fluence or power density, we actually, so for example, um, this is what is going to happen when you have 2 gigawatt per centimeter square and compared to that when you apply um, uh, apply uh, 6 gigawatt per centimeter square, the shock wave or the shock pressure that you generate and particularly the amplitude, the maximum pressure that you can generate will be much higher. So, this is a very major process parameter, the uh, power density of the laser pulses. The next important thing of course, is the pulse width. Uh, since we are talking about power density, so the exact area of the spot is not so important. Uh, then the, you have to choose the right set, right kind of a coating here, film here, which actually can instantly generate the plasma and that plasma should be non-reactive. And then if you are also able to use a confinement, so that the plasma, so that the pressure created is mostly applied onto this direction, onto the workpiece than in the other direction, then obviously you uh, derive the bigger benefit. Um, so, just like short pinning, in case of short pinning we or even shock pinning when the striker hits, we saw that this would be the uh, deformation zone below the object which is uh, incident onto the surface or the projectile onto the surface. And so, uh, initially this is how the uh, material will tend to deform, but then subsequently the material wants to come back and spring back and that is how we create state of uh, compressive stress onto the surface. The same thing happened in case of uh, plasma induced shock waves. So, instead of a physical object hitting the surface, it is the shock wave 
uh, created through this uh, uh, plasma which actually tends to deform. So, it tends to deform here and exactly because of the uh, reaction to such uh, tendency of deformation you create a state of stress which is uh, towards each other not away from each other. So, that means you create uh, negative stresses or compressive stresses. Uh, so, this is exactly the mechanism that is followed and as a result uh, this is the tensile side and this is the compression side. So, onto the surface you actually have a state of stress let us say up to this depth which is negative in nature compressive in nature and below that in the interior you may have positive state of stress, but again onto the other side if this side is also treated will also develop negative state of stress. So, that means uh, a sheet of a finite thickness can actually uh, develop a state of stress which is uh, compressive in nature onto the surface where the core may still be at a, a relatively tensile uh, state of stress which is uh, certainly not going to make any difference. Now, um, if you compare the different methods of pinning, so for a given material, uh, uh, so same material, the if we compare the state of residual or the magnitude of the residual stress created um, uh, in terms of KSI or in terms of mega Pascal, then what we see is that if the process, if the pinning method is short pinning, so this is where we are if the method is uh, uh, laser pinning then this is where we are. So, what we understand is that uh, either short pinning or sh ultrasonic shock pinning or ultrasonic pinning the magnitude of the residual stress that we develop in case of laser shock pinning is much higher that is and also deeper. So, both these effects are very, very beneficial. So, if you compare between the three possibilities that we have discussed, short pinning, sh uh, ultrasonic shock pinning and um, uh, laser shock pinning, then obviously laser shock pinning is the most precise, more, most effective, but is more sophisticated and hence is more expensive. Now, one another type of possibility of introducing such residual compressive stress onto the surface could be simply deformation. Now, either you hit with a projectile or hit with a, a ultrasonic, I mean a striker propelled by an ultrasonic wave or a laser or a, a plasma um, a, a shock created by a vaporized ultrafast vaporization uh, through a laser irradiation. In all these cases, we essentially are trying to deform. Essentially, the net effect is certain deformation onto the surface up to a certain depth. Now, I can easily deform without going into all those uh, uh, processes. I can also deform if I simply roll the material. So, if I if I have a certain stock of a finite thickness, and if I pass it through two rotating rolls, and if if we pass it below and if the material has a thickness greater than the uh, gap between the rolls, then obviously there will be deformation. And if this gap is nearly about the same as the thickness of the material, then the deformation layer will penetrate only skin depth from the surface. So, that kind of a rolling with control deformation is called skin pass rolling SPR. Now, when we actually employ such skin pass rolling, this is nothing but a cold deformation process uh, mechanically in nature and uh, actually it can have a significant effect uh, in terms of the mechanical properties on the by way of prevention of Luder's band uh, creating strip flatness. If there are waviness, it can be corrected. Uh, if there is some surface topography which is not beneficial or not desirable, we can take care to this. So, the process requires application of little bit of lubricant or you can do even dry friction uh, rolling, uh, use uh, relatively uh, lower power, but so that the deformation zone actually is confined only to the surface or near surface region. So, if you compare an, a steel for, for that matter in annealed state, in cold roll state, and in skin pass rolled state, then and if you compare, then you realize that 
when you compare cold rolled state with skin pass rolled state, the yield stress will be about the same. There is hardly any difference in the yield stress. But the total, uh, uh, the, the, the plastic, uh, the strain, the uniform plastic strain that you actually uh, derive after uh, skin pass rolling will be higher. So, the yield stress remains the same, but the ductility or so called plastic deformation, the amount of engineering strain is more, and this is certainly beneficial. So, uh, skin pass rolling is going to be helpful because of uh, this particular effect. So, this is a typical machine <coughs> where you have multi strand roll you actually can control very well exactly the amount of uh, pressure that you are applying and hence the depth of uh, deformation and also the rate of deformation. So, uh, you actually can produce a smooth surface of uniform thickness, you can lock the dislocations whatever you create onto the surface and also can reduce the yield point phenomenon or the lurus band. So, we do not want uh, if this is the stress strain curve we do not want uh, to create such luders band and then the plastic zone. So, this kind of uh, uh, striations at, at the, at the uh, upper yield point, lower yield point phenomenon can be reduced or prevented and the state of stress can actually or the plastic curve can actually uh, deformation curve can be fairly smooth because of uh, such skin pass rolling. It also helps in uh, removing the uh, defects known as sprangles which are very commonly occurring on the surface you develop certain uh, contours, uh, certain defects uh, typically appearing like uh, uh, freckle or sprangle onto the surface. So, on a wider surface. So, you can remove this kind of uh, uh, situations or uh, defects by way of this skin pass rolling. One last uh, important technique that I would like to mention in terms of these kind of surface deformation uh, aided processes for uh, improving the fatigue strength is the uh, low plasticity burnishing. So, you simply have a roll, you have actually you have a um, uh, roll, uh, you have a spherical ball. So, the contact is a very uh, point contact and it simply rolls over to the sur rolls over the surface. So, it moves for example, say le left to right and, and covers the entire length of the uh, sample. So, when you when this uh, spherical ball moves over rolls over, it actually rolls with a certain amount of stress already applied onto the surface. So, as a result it creates again limited deformation onto the surface and induces uh, compressive stress um, and this actually or uh, actually um, it can relieve also a certain amount of st state of stress if the temperature is high. Um, the fatigue life uh, can be improved by uh, substantially can be improved. Uh, it can even double the endurance limit and retard the cracks already existing onto the surface by way of this uh, uh, low plasticity burnishing. So, we are aware of the burnishing of uh, wooden uh, objects. Uh, so, where basically you have a certain fluid and the uh, waxman polishes the surface with this fluid and that uh, actually uh, creates not only a good, good or nice aesthetic look, but also creates a state of stress which actually is beneficial. But this burnishing is uh, through a mechanical means where the ball rotates onto the surface with application of certain amount of normal force which creates a very thin deformation layer onto the surface which goes on um, uh, uh, creation of certain compressive stress or at least uh, uh, prevents relaxation of compressive stress onto the surface. So, it can turn the tensile into compression or it can actually prevent relaxation of compressive stress created by some other uh, processes. The last thing that I want to mention is called deep rolling and this is where you actually press the ball against the surface that you want to treat at a fairly high uh, generate a fairly high force and uh, a very high Hertzian compressive state of stress is created at the point of contact where the ball actually uh, uh, contacts the surface. But compared to this where it moves from one end to another uh, during this rotation while the ball rotates here and it moves from one end to the other. Here 
the object that we are rotating the spherical object that we are rotating that is rotating at a particular rpm with simultaneous application of force. So, th this is the object which is rotating at very high rpm and at the same time there is a state of stress applied onto that. So, there are multiple rotations at uh, while the while the ball is uh, moving over the surface. So, the uh, degree of deformation is larger and uh, this can continuously progress over the entire surface area. So, this deformation plastic deformation will be deeper and hence the, uh, uh, the residual stress that you develop would be uh, greater in amplitude and deeper in uh, depth. So, time to recapitulate. So, what we all what we have discussed so far is uh, the processes which are uh, related to uh, surface deformation limited surface deformation leading to um, uh, creation of residual compressive stress onto the surface. So, we discussed short pinning in the previous lecture and now we discuss ultra shock um, uh, ultrasound propelled uh, shock pinning. We also discuss laser pinning, but we did compare the various uh, mechanisms and relative efficacy of uh, one process to another in terms of the uh, amplitude of stress created, the effectiveness of the process, the overall kinetics of the process, but also the relative ease or difficulty associated with the process. Um, we certainly realize that uh, laser shock pinning is much more sophisticated, but obviously brings in uh, a, a certain dividends which are not possible by short pinning or ultrasound uh, pinning. Um, as I said, the laser pinning is a contact less process and um, whereas, uh, the other ones are all uh, requiring deformation uh, which are uh, through certain impacts, physical impact of uh, either the shots or the pins or the needles and so on. Um, so, the main message of all these processes of pinning processes that we have discussed is to uh, be it on a welded joint or simply a rolled sheet or a cast product or a rotating part, a shaft or a beam or um, a gear or um, ball bearing and so on. In all these rotating parts which are likely to fail uh, by way of uh, fatigue, um, uh, this kind of surface deformation processes actually can introduce uh, up to a certain depth uh, uh, limited deformation zone which will create in turn a state of compressive stress onto the surface and uh, in the process can extend the fatigue life and reliability of the component. So, that is how they are very, very useful. So, thank you very much.